This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's Global, a leading Republican and critic of Donald Trump loses her seat. Liz Cheney is defeated in Wyoming after refusing to embrace what she described as his cult of personality. It would have required that I enable his ongoing efforts to unravel our democratic system and attack the foundations of our republic. That was a path I could not and would not take. Donald Trump gloats, but what does this mean for the Republican Party and for American politics as we head towards the midterm elections? Also on today's programme, the number of forest fires increased 20 times last year, scorching an area the size of Romania. In eastern Spain, 10 passengers are hurt after their train was swept up in a wildfire. Reports suggest Russia is replacing the commander of its Black Sea fleet. It comes after attacks on military bases in Crimea. And an immense feeling of joy. Two paddleboarders describe this surprise encounter with a group of whales. They join us live from Buenos Aires. Hello and welcome to BBC News. One of Donald Trump's fiercest critics in his own Republican Party has been forced out of her seat after the former president backed a rival candidate. Liz Cheney, who had represented Wyoming since 2017, lost a primary election to choose the Republican candidate for the congressional elections in November. The winner, Harriet Haberman, was endorsed by Mr Trump and supports his baseless claims that election fraud by the Democrats cost him the 2020 race for the White House. Well, in the next Next hour, we'll be finding out why Tuesday's poll in America's least populated state could have big implications for the country's politics and presidency. Here's Sean Dilley. <laughs> we seen the thing. Well, listen, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the programme and just describing what that was like. I mean, the footage is, is incredible, but hearing your descriptions as well and seeing you alongside uh, those whales, absolutely fascinating to, to hear from you and have you on the programme. Thank you so much, uh, Valentin and Diego, for talking to us uh, live there from Argentina. Well, we're going to take a break. When we're back, we're uh, back with more of the day's headline stories. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's Global, a leading Republican and critic of Donald Trump is defeated in Wyoming. Liz Cheney loses her seat after refusing to embrace what she described as his cult of personality. It would have required that I enable his ongoing efforts to unravel our democratic system and attack the foundations of our republic. That was a path I could not and would not take. Donald Trump gloats, but what does this mean for the Republican Party and for American politics as we head towards the midterm elections? Also in today's programme, the number of forest fires increased 20 times last year, scorching an area the size of Romania. In eastern Spain, 10 passengers are hurt after their train was swept up in a wildfire. India and Pakistan mark 75 years since independence. We look back at the violent separation of two communities. We hear from one man who lived through it with this message for both countries. Wish uh, we become friends and uh, live a peaceful life. In business, profits plunge at target. The US retailer sees income slump 90% from a year ago. And striding for the moon. NASA moves its new giant rocket towards its first test launch. It's hoped it will eventually put astronauts back on the moon for the first time in 50 years. Welcome back to BBC News. Both Pakistan and India are celebrating 75 years of independence this week. In 1947, at the end of decades of British rule in India, the country was partitioned, creating two independent nations, Muslim-majority Pakistan and Hindu-majority India. 
Well, in the years that followed, both have grown economically and in global influence. They've also become nuclear powers and adversaries. How do people in both India and Pakistan see their countries? In a moment, we're going to hear from our South Asia correspondent, Rajini Vaidinathan, in the Indian capital, Delhi. But first, this report from our Pakistan correspondent, Pumsa Filani, in Islamabad. Now we're approaching our break. When we come back for our next edition, uh, we have a report from uh, Moscow because uh, one in eight uh, Jewish people are now leaving Russia since the start of the war. So we'll have uh, more on that report coming up in a moment or two. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrily Waller. On today's Global, a leading Republican and critic of Donald Trump loses her seat. Liz Cheney loses her seat after refusing to embrace what she described as his cult of personality. It would have required that I enable his ongoing efforts to unravel our democratic system and attack the foundations of our republic. That was a path I could not and would not take. Donald Trump gloats, but what does this mean for the Republican Party and for American politics as we head towards the midterm elections? Also on today's programme, the number of forest fires increased 20 times last year, scorching an area the size of Romania. In eastern Spain, 10 passengers are hurt after their train was swept up in a wildfire. Reports suggest Russia has replaced the command of its Black Sea Fleet. It comes after attacks on military bases in Crimea. And an immense feeling of joy. Two paddleboarders described this surprise encounter with a group of whales. We think that they approached to us uh, just for curious. Uh, we were uh, paddling near the, the zone, so the they began, they began to, to approach to us. Hello and welcome to BBC News. One of Donald Trump's fiercest critics in his own Republican Party has been forced out of her seat after the former president backed a rival. Liz Cheney, who has represented Wyoming since 2017, lost a primary election to choose the Republican candidate for the congressional elections in November. The winner, Harriet Haberman, was endorsed by Mr Trump and supports his baseless claim that election fraud by the Democrats cost him the 2020 race for the White House. Tuesday's poll in America's least populated state could have big implications for the country's politics and presidency. Here's Sean Dilley. Wasn't that wonderful? I told you it was uplifting. Uh, fabulous pictures and, and fabulous uh, just uh, hearing those descriptions from those two paddleboarders, Valentin and Diego, joining us on today's programme. It's going to be boring for them being back on the water without that group of whales. Uh, I'm back in a moment or two with today's headlines and back with the full edition in 30 minutes time. Hopefully, I'll see you then. Bye for now. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrily Waller. We start this hour with breaking news. We're getting reports of an explosion at a mosque in Kabul. It's thought there are multiple casualties. We'll bring you more details as we get them. Also on today's programme, a leading critic of Donald Trump is defeated in Wyoming. Liz Cheney effectively loses her seat after refusing to embrace what she described as his cult of personality. 
It would have required that I enable his ongoing efforts to unravel our democratic system and attack the foundations of our republic. That was a path I could not and would not take. Donald Trump gloats, but she says she's thinking of running for president to keep him out of the Oval Office. Also in today's programme, the number of forest fires increased 20 times last year, scorching an area the size of Romania. In eastern Spain, 10 passengers were hurt after their train was swept up in a wildfire. Reports suggest Russia has replaced the commander of its Black Sea fleet. It comes after attacks on military bases in Crimea. And an immense feeling of joy. Two paddleboarders describe this surprise encounter with a group of whales. We are curious also and like uh, them, like exactly. them, like them. Hello and welcome to BBC World News and we start with that breaking news because an explosion has ripped through a mosque in the Afghan capital Kabul during evening prayers killing and injuring a number of worshippers. Uh, details coming in all of the time so let's speak to Ambrosan Etherajan, our South Asia regional editor who's joined me here in the studio and uh, what else are you hearing? What a wonderful story that was, uh, those two paddleboarders talking to me a little earlier. Before we close our programme, just a reminder of those events in the last hour or so in Kabul with an explosion at a mosque with uh, reports of multiple injuries, unconfirmed that 20 people have been killed, as many as 40 injured. The local hospital has received 27 injured, five children among them, including a seven-year-old. Uh, do stay with us on BBC News throughout the course of the next few hours. We'll have regular updates uh, on that major breaking story. But thanks for watching today and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hello there, it's still dry, sunny and hot for many parts of Eastern Europe.